Today we are going to be doing a demonstration on painting pearls. This is a subject matter that I've had many requests for. You've seen them appear in many of my paintings. And so I'm gonna be showing you how I do that today. But before we get down to the watercolors and brushes and even looking at pearls, I'm gonna talk a little bit about round objects and how to paint those, or at least how to look at them first before we start to think about how we paint them. Two things to be aware of, or three things when we look at a round object. First of all, there is the light source. In this case right now, my light is coming from about a 45 degree angle up this way in that direction. That's where my desk lamp happens to be. And I am sitting directly in front of the object. So the light, the highlight that I'm going to see is actually going to be coming in, bouncing in from a 45 degree angle, hitting my object and bouncing back towards me, towards my eyes. And that is where I'm then going to see a highlight. So this is kind of the midpoint of the angle between where the light comes from, incoming light, outgoing to my eyeball. That's where we see the highlight right now. And secondly, there are two kinds of reflected light when you are looking at an object. There is specular, which literally means mirror-like and is going to be a direct reflection of what you see around you. Depending on how shiny the surface of your object is, the more specular light you're going to see. The highlight is specular light. That is a direct reflection of my light source. Now on objects that are more absorbing of light, actually this rubber ball <laughs> does actually reflect a little bit. You can see specular highlight right there, right? That's where my light source is. You don't really see a whole lot of other reflection on this though, because it is very light absorbing. Now this wooden ball, on the other hand, also is rather absorbing. You don't really see a whole lot of the reflected light, specular light. You see the highlight there. That's about it. Now this shiny plastic snack container of my daughter's, <laughs> but we're gonna look at it on this side. Uh, it is actually quite reflective because it is smooth plastic. And so we're gonna be seeing a lot of things going on here, almost as much as we're gonna see when we look at a pearl. I'm gonna be using this, this ball for now because it's easier to talk about when it's such a large object. Well, pearl is gonna be harder, but it's gonna be the same concepts. So we got the specular light. The second, second kind of reflection that we're gonna see is diffuse. And this is more often going to be, you're gonna see more of the color of the object, in this case, which is pale blue. In the case of a pearl, it's gonna be all these, all, this, uh, all these wonderful colors that you see in pearls, these very subtle shades. In this case, it's blue, but you're also gonna be able to see this blue tinted with the colors of things around it. So right now I have this blackboard under here. You might see this darkness as shadow, but it's in fact reflected diffuse light because if I stick a white page under it, suddenly we see this white rim of light around the edge. That's because the paper is reflecting. And if I were to stick something orange, now that has much more of an orange hint to it and that's, that's a combination of diffuse and specular reflected light there now that we're getting. Additionally, we're seeing some other little spots of white. Uh, you see those, those are more specular reflection because I have a window behind me, directly behind me this way. And I also have an overhead light above. So that's, that's what we're seeing over there. And Along this edge, you're seeing a little bit of light reflected from my computer monitor, which is directly that way. So there's gonna be a lot of reflections and things going on. You can see even when I put my, when I put my hand next to it, suddenly the shadow, the shadowed edge becomes darker and you're gonna see the reflection of my hand and the shadows as well. 
So all of these things are things to keep in mind when we start drawing a round object. It's not simply this very, um, you know, what you'd think of as something very basic with the sphere, hemisphere of light, hemisphere of shadow, gradation. It's not quite so simple as that when we look at all the reflections and various elements that are in play. Now let's look at this pearl. It is highly reflective. So there's going to be a lot of specular light on it. It's really going to also take on the hues and shades of whatever is around it very easily because of its reflective nature. But unlike metal or a mirror ball, it is not a crisp, clear reflection. There is a little bit of diffuse quality to it due to the nature of its surface texture. And so we're going to see a bunch of different things. In this first image on the left, you're going to see the pearl. And to the right, this is sort of the pearl's eye view of the world. This is what you would see if you were looking directly outward from the pearl towards me. And so this is going to be therefore reflected on the mirror-like surface of the pearl. Although since the pearl itself is not a mirror, it's going to be blurred and diffused. And so to give you an idea, a very idea of what I'm talking about here, I'm going to do a quick little bit of photoshopping just to show you what's happening. So I essentially just took that photograph, the image from Pearl's eye view, and I just turned it into a sphere. This is just a filter that you could do in Photoshop. Again, this is not a digital painting that I'm doing here. I'm just doing it for the purposes of letting you see what's happening. And then I blurred that. I took that photograph, that spherized photograph and blurred it, blurred it some more. And finally pumped up the, or lowered the contrast actually a little bit. And this would be because the pearl itself has its own color, its own local color. And that is going to merge and melt with the reflected component. So as a result, it's sort of a muted version of the colors that are around and reflected on the surface. And as well, I added a little bit of a highlight spectral bit on that le upper left corner. As a result, with this very quick little bit of photoshopping, you can see something that is approximating what the pearl looks like. This is now what we are going to try to achieve with watercolors. Being aware of what is around in the surroundings and pulling in elements from that to appear in the reflections and highlights and colors that you see on the surface of this round object. Let's get down to paint brushes and paper and paint now, shall we? Now, as we just discussed, pearls are a little bit of, they're sort of chameleons. They are miniature mirrors of everything that is surrounding you, everything that is outside the scope of your painting, specifically because they are reflecting what's going on in the background areas. Fortunately for most of us, uh, usually when you're painting pearls, they're going to be in very small portions. They're going to be little bits adorning a lady's neck or hair or wherever else you decide to put them. And they're not going to be giant central focuses unless you do strange, weird pearl butterfly creatures as I do or have some inclination to do something of that sort. So most of the time, you're going to be simplifying what you see. 
and you're going to be going for the major concepts. So therefore understanding what's going on with the light is important because you need to be able to hit the key points, the key features and elements, namely the local color of the pearl. And I have here a few different kinds. These are kind of pinkish toned and this is more of a yellowish uh, off-white eggshell tone, which is what I've got here as well. These are just some beads that I've got. You can go down to Michael's craft store and pick up things like this to use as reference. And so anyway, because they are little micro mirrors of what is going on in all the surroundings, you have to be aware of that. And especially in a fantasy painting sort of image, this is going to be tricky because you're going to have to use your imagination <laughs> and your understanding of exactly how these reflections are happening in order to create the effective look that you want and the effective mood and depiction. Now, first of all, I'm going to start out with a circle and making sure that my pencil lines are very clean because a lot of the edges are going to be pale and I don't want my pencil lines to be distracting. I just have a kneaded eraser here, which is also incidentally what I used to put my little pearl here in a position where it's not going to roll off. And in fact, actually the kneaded eraser sometimes will mark the paper a little bit. So I'm going to stick it on a little dime as a stand. Perfect. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my kneaded eraser you can just take a bit of it off and an easy way to uniformly lift up some of your pencil lines and make everything much lighter is just to roll it like that. Also, I'm going to mention that what you see here, what you see in this pearl is not necessarily going to be matching what I'm painting for one, because the point of view of the camera is slightly different from where my eye is. And therefore where the light is bouncing off the pearl and coming into the camera lens is going to be different from the angle where the light is coming to the pearl and hitting my eyes. So there's gonna be that difference. And secondly, as I mentioned, I don't want to necessarily have all these reflections indicating that, oh, there is a person here painting and a computer monitor over there. <laughs> so I'm using it more as a guideline for what I desire. And depending on the painting, there's going to be different features that you would choose to pull out and highlight. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start with, this is a size four brush. And I am going to wet my pearl area. A little bit of green on my brush. I did not want that. My brush is, it's got a decent amount of water on it loaded up. Not enough that anything is pooling, but it is enough to wet this circular area. and maintain that level of moisture across the whole round surface right now so that things are not drying out before I can complete this initial wash. Once I have that initial wash, I should have mixed my colors ahead of time, but I'm going to start with a buff titanium and a tiny bit of gamboge. And lay that in. It is an extremely pale wash that I'm doing right now. And I'm just painting the entire surface. Now 
my specular light highlight is going to be right about here and I'm going to be having a rim of light that goes around the entirety. And this could be slightly darker. The highlight is going to be the brightest point. So from this point onward, I'm going to avoid painting right there. I'm also going to mostly avoid painting on the outer rim, which leaves now this mid zone that I'm going to be tackling. And pearls have a lot of iridescence to them. That's one of the things that makes them really tricky. They've got lots of colors. If you examine them, you'll see greens and pinks and blues mingled in with all of the highlights as well and the reflections. So I'm going to prepare a few of those colors in my palette here. I have this green and I'm going to get some pink. This is quinoquidrone pink. Uh, mixed with a couple of other things here. I think this is a, some kind of cobalt rose pink tone and I have just in my palette still. I'm going to make use of it. And there's also hints of blues. And all of this is sort of muted down with overlayers of buff titanium and yellowish tones. So I'm just preparing a lot of those here in the palette, ready to go. That way I don't have to be wasting time while my page is drying, sometimes if I'm doing a wash, to mix those on the fly. All right, now that I have that set up, I am going to re-wet things. I think it sort of dried out here while I was doing that. I'm going to wet the entirety again. And the reason I do this is because I don't want my paint, my wash, even, even though I'm keeping highlights from here on out, as I mentioned, I don't want my wash to just stop in an abrupt, harsh edged line when it hits the edge of my liquid. So in order to prevent that, I have to wet the entire thing. But make sure, again, that it's not overly so, because if you put too much water, it will let the paint sort of flow out to the edges and then you're going to lose the areas of white or highlights that you want to maintain. Starting with some of this pink. And I'm going to paint that along this lower part. This is wet on wet, so it bleeds a little bit, which is great. That's what I want. A little bit of green. If you pump too much water, as I said, it will just all flow to the edges. But just damp a damp page so that there's this sheen of liquid on it. That lets the paint move and expand and bloom out from where you drop the color, where you drop the pigment, but not go out of control and spread into areas that you don't want. And some of that blue as well. And you notice, as, as I did with the bubble tutorial the other day, I'm moving mostly in a circular pattern with my brush. A circular way that follows the edges, follows the surface of my object.
Now I'm painting this pearl in a void, by which I mean there are no surroundings. And we were just spent all this time talking about surroundings and how that affects the color. But I'm, I've got my imaginary surroundings and my imaginary tones. And so I, this, all of this sort of affects what is going to be seen here. Um, I want mostly a light edge formed by something light that is going to be where this is set. That's my initial wash. Once that dries out a little bit, then I can start darkening it and working in more of this iridescent, lustrous look. I'm going to do another wash now. Again, wetting down my area. Now I'm going to start leaving my specular highlight out of things. I'm not actually going to wet that. And this time, I've got a mixture of it's sort of a neutral toned grayish blue green. Uh, I used a mixture of French ultramarine, quinquadrone yellow, quinquadrone gold, sorry, not yellow, and a little bit of Van Dyke brown actually to neutralize the tones a little bit. do that along this upper edge. I didn't get this part wet enough, so my paint is not spreading, blending in. But that's okay. I can add some water now and do that. You notice that I'm still mostly keeping the rim of light around the exterior as well. Keeping my curve very gentle here. And making sure it's round. Because if it's not evenly distributed, then it's going to give an a lopsided look to things. Okay. Some more of that. Getting this neutral bluish green look. Now, I don't want to overdo the layers and obliterate all trace of individual colors because that, that's kind of what the interleaving of all these colors, these pinks and greens and blues, are what give this sense of iridescence. It's the way these different colors are activated and mingled in with the reflected surroundings. Now pearls are also not entirely smooth. They're kind of lumpy in a way. <laughs> lumpy bumpy. And, and so I don't necessarily keep all my gradations even. I leave these lighter areas give it that little bit of modeling. And I think I'm losing too much of my blues right now, so I'm going to pull some more in in a second. This is a little bit of a uh, yellowish green here on this edge. And I need some more blues. As I've lost that entirely and it's it's just this green blue mix instead. 
You see, I'm working my way around this highlight. And I'm going to be working it even more, working in a lot of darks around it. Because the dark contrast is what really gives you that illusion of light. Without the contrast, there is no light. Some more pinks again. Right up into this light area. Mingle that with some yellows. continue darkening this upper hemisphere. I, I don't know if you noticed at this point, I'm full out working in dry brush mode. I'm no longer doing glazing or wet and wet. Everything's pretty dry and I'm using my very small fine brush, fine tipped brush and just very lightly scraping across the surface of my paper in order to create this very delicate shading and texture. Some of my darkest areas are going to be just adjacent to the rim of light. It's because of the way reflected surroundings are coming at you from an angle over here. You're seeing that. And so as a result, you're going to see the most concentrated colors in those, in those areas. Uh, switching to a more reddish toned pink now. Actually, I'm gonna, not even pink, I'm gonna make that full out orange. Uh, Quinoquadrone Sienna, I believe is what I'm using. Again, and I mute, mute it down a little bit with some of my more neutral tones. Just whatever is in my palette actually works really well for this. And as before, I'm working in those darkest areas right up against this almost lightest, this penultimate lightest area, which is the rim. But you also have to maintain that softness, that gradation. It's, it's not going to be a hard edge right up here against the light. It has to fade into it. And I like to put, I like to put uh, sort of interleaved layers of color right up against there. Again, it adds to that illusion of iridescence and also 
if you had multiple surroundings, elements in your surroundings, they're all going to be having their individual reflected elements over there. Since I'm working with this pearl in a void, I have to hint at those, but not necessarily make them uh, make them definitive. And pink so here more. This would be reflected element of whatever is directly in front of the pearl. In my earlier example where I was fooling around with it digitally and showing you how the reflection gets distorted onto the surface, this would be me. <laughs> in my red shirt right in front. Well, I'm not wearing that red shirt right now and I don't want that to be what's in front of the pearl, but you, you get the idea of what I'm trying to say here is, is that whatever is in front in your painting, that is what's going to be the predominant color and reflection that you're going to see in this area. And to mute that bright pink, I'm actually going to layer on top of it some bluish green. Now, once I get it to this stage, I am going to wet my brush just with water and blend everything because I've been working dry brush, as I mentioned. You see a lot of my tiny little brush strokes and I want to smooth things out a little bit. Not entirely, I don't want to obliterate any sort of hard edge, but I do want to soften things. And just brushing clear water over here does that. Especially down over into the edge. Now this is my shadowed side right here. And I'm going to be adding a little bit more tone into it. Not enough to get rid of that pale rim, but I do want some more definition along that edge. I'm using a green here. And it's just letting that blend in with the darker tones that I have. See, this is a little bit too hard of a line here. I'm trying to smooth that out so that it's not quite a line and more of a colored band. Continuing to darken this area, still with some of my muted combinations of 
greenish tones. Don't want to obliterate all the pink. I could go back on top if I need to. And I also want to darken this upper area some more. You see, I just keep going back into, into the areas, doing a little bit of dry brush, then smoothing things out with water, and continuing to build up my layers and colors like this. Using a large variety of colors. Switching over to some pink again. And I'm, I'm not staying, I'm not, uh, I'm not refraining from using other random colors too. These are just kind of the key tones that I want to have, the pink, green, and blue. But I'm, I'm also melding in other colors. You saw my palette when I started out. It wasn't pristine. I had some other colors from previous paintings still left over in there and I I was just using, I'm just using those. This is dry brush still. Again, hitting everything with a wash. In fact, this time I'm going to be glazing a little bit of buff titanium over it. Buff titanium is a really great color for these kinds of glazes. I use it quite often because it's it's a semi-neutral uh, tone, a little bit tinted towards yellow, but just the faintest hint of that. I use it for glazing on top of skin tones as well after I've done shadows. I'll do the shadows with blues and greens and burnt umber, and then I'll glaze over the top with buff titanium. I'm going all the way to the edge. And I lost too much of my pink. So going back and getting a little bit more of that in, in there, as well as some of the bright greens. This is wet and wet again because it's still wet from my buff titanium glaze. dry a little bit. Zooming back out now. This way you can get a larger sense. This is a white gel pen. I like using Uniball Signo. You could also use white wash or even white watercolor paint. And I'm just making the edges of this highlight much more sharp because I want that contrast against what it's uh, what the surroundings are. And I'm adding a little bit of more of a highlight around this edge here. 
Actually, this is a, another reflected specular bit. And it's very hard edged now, but I'm going to be going in in just a second with my brush and softening that up. So after I paint that, just getting a little bit of water. So my brush is damp and softening the edges of that white. And as with everything else, I am mostly keeping my brush strokes parallel to the surface that I'm moving against which is to say that I'm moving in this circular brush stroke. This large circular, not, not tiny little circles like that, but a large one that kind of follows the contour of the sphere. I'm just using this brush to blend it out. The key to the iridescent look is to have all these varied colors that you saw me prep and use. You know, these, this pink and green and blue and purple and oranges, all these colors. And instead of just blending them one on top of each other, I have them sort of adjacent and interweaving with each other. And that's what's going to really give you that sense of iridescence. If you just blend everything all together, then as you know with color theory, taking all those colors, you're just going to end up with brown or uninteresting gray. And while there is some of that neutral tone that I am achieving because of all these layers, I'm also making certain to keep areas of just one color. You know, like right up here, I have a very yellowish tone and over here now I'm doing uh, blue and they're they're adjacent to each other and they're also adjacent to all these other tones like this pink right over here which I'm going to leave alone I'm not going to over go over a little bit but I'm leaving that green I'm leaving that pink I'm also leaving this greenish tone over here all of these together add up to create this sense of multicolored uh, iridescence. Especially around the highlight, I'm getting kind of a, a minty green color is what I want. Oops, too dark. A little bit less paint. Using very little pigment for this. And where I see areas where it seems to jump out at me too much, I blend it out like this. I'm going to take some water, brush over areas and smooth them out and blend them in a little bit more so that there is this harmonious blending of all these colors. So it is the result of uneven 
blending of a multitude of tones that is going to give you this effect. And you can see that while pearl itself is a light colored object, my color tones are actually quite dark once it gets once it all gets laid in here like this. It's the highlight that you have to maintain as a really bright spot though. Getting a little bit more along the edges to further define this round shape. Of course, if I was painting this within a setting, then this would not simply be such a, just a darker edge, but the surrounding background color. There we go. That is my finished pearl. Now, before I leave off, I am going to show you briefly what I would do in a smaller scale using this same technique, really, as I was talking about isolating down to the elements that are of key importance. So this is just a small string of raw pearls, and they're kind of funky shapes. Usually they're kind of lumpy, and as a result, you're going to get lots of points of highlights on each one of them. And I'm just going through with some neutral tones at first, laying down the foundation buff titanium, as well as some of that bluish green, building up through successive layers, adding a little bit more color each time, a little bit more blue here and there, especially I'm adding a lot of darkness in between each of the pearls because as we discussed earlier that's where a lot of the reflected color is going to be and in this case since it is another pearl it's going to be dark right there. Adding more layers of colors, pinks coming in here, a little bit of pink and a little bit of a bright pinpoint highlight using the white gel pen. Thank you very much for joining me today for this tutorial. I hope you found it elucidating. And if you have any requests for future subject matter or topics you'd like to see me tackle, please feel free to drop me a line either by email or leaving a comment here, and I'll be happy to take it under consideration. Thanks as always to my patrons at patreon.com slash stephanielaw.